Hello and welcome to Phil Galloway Draws. Today we're going to be looking at a process video on one of my digital paintings created using ArtRage 5. We'll hopefully give you a, a little bit of an insight into the workings of the new program, which is a, an amazing thing, but also if you're keen to know how I kind of create my artwork, it will be able to show you a little bit of that. So let's get down to it. Okay, so here we are with ArtRage open. I'm currently running ArtRage 5, uh, which was just released a couple of weeks ago. And if you're not familiar with ArtRage, uh, I thoroughly recommend you having, having a go of it. Um, it's absolutely brilliant and has pretty much become my go-to drawing app for 90, 95% of my artwork uh, for professional editorial work, uh, right down to private commissions. It recreates the flow of oil paint fantastically. It's easy to use, but it's very it's got a lot of depth if you want to kind of delve into it. And with ArtRage 5 now, even more so with custom brushes and whatnot. So I'll give you a little bit of uh, a tour around as we're going. So hopefully you pick up a little bit about what ArtRage is about, but also learn how I get my process. So what we've been what I was working on here was a portrait of Sergio Aguero for a BT Sport promotion uh, as part of their Champions Draw competition and it, he was one of three characters within a much bigger piece um, and I chose to do these footballers in Elizabethan dress because I'm a bit crazy and thought it would be funny because um, they were playing Barcelona so I did them as Sir Francis Drake. So here we're at the first stage of this and so it's the just the initial pencil drawing. So I'm working on a 12 uh, by 16, 16 by 12 inch canvas which is A3 size, which was more than big enough for, for what, I, what I needed it for um, and for subsequent prints down the line. And it's at 300 uh, DPI, so nice and detailed. Um, and this was the first stage. So what, we, what I chose was just the bog standard pencil tool on the left. There's different presets now, if I move that up, uh, for shading and different things like that. But the bog standard one is absolutely fine. Choose a nice dark color and off you go as you see. It reacts just like pencil, the lighter the touch, the further it in, uh, the lighter it goes. Um, and so I would sketch it out. This is probably a little bit more detail than I usually would put in an initial drawing because I just wanted to get his costume right and just get the proportions right. So I spent, I went to town on it a little bit and spent a bit longer. And so just get the general feel for his face because the next stage is, is where you start fleshing it out and any kind of discrepancies or any problems, you can start building it um, up from there. I've got, just to kind of give you again a tour around what's going on around the screen, on this side I've got my Aguero reference, so a photo of him. I've got another reference of a Velasquez portrait, which I really like, just the kind of textural brush strokes and the colours used and his, his flesh tones I thought were quite similar to Sergio's. And on the right hand side I have one of my previous digital paintings, which is of a Caravaggio. Um, and... Again, it, uh, I just like the skin tones and, and I wanted it to be to remind me of the kind of drapery and the way I painted that. So you may be wondering why he's on a orangey ready background. And that's because um, as an art historian, I, I studied a lot of kind of the masters and I specialised in, in Caravaggio and that period of Baroque art and high renaissance. And a lot of the artists then and still to this day now will paint on this red kind of background. And this is because it lets the kind of luminosity of the skin tones going on top of it shine through. If you leave any gaps, it's there, so you don't get these kind of mishmash of, of, of white little flecks around when you take it into Photoshop or whatever. Um, and it really just helps with kind of building up the flesh tones. Um, I've, I do paint sometimes on a white background if I'm going for kind of crazier colours and I'm not too worried about it being lifelike. But if I'm going for you know proper skin tones and those kind of greens and yellows within the skin, I find it's far easier to kind of achieve that using the orange background. So that's why I'm not just a mental guy. Um, so this would be the first stage. And then what we would move on to would be, if I open up the next layer, this bit. So blocking in the shades and making Aguero look kind of like a zombie. But what we're doing in this stage is literally just trying to build up the baseline colours of his face, the shape, the structure of his jawline, the forehead, the lines across here, uh, and gain that just, just with the kind of darker tones of the face. So to, to get that kind of first blocking in of colours, I, I don't want to be using too much paint on the brush. I want to keep it uh, pretty flat, and as you can see here, 
There's not much texture to that. And that's because I don't want it to become, to become a, a, a mess on the canvas. So in the settings of your brush, you put your loading right down to between four and maybe 9%. And as you can see in the bottom left here, you start getting the, the strands kind of showing through because the paint isn't covering all the brush. So you get these lovely textures, which shows the canvas kind of coming through. I've got the canvas set to reasonably rush, rough, I think it's rough paper on this one. Uh, if you've got the kind of textured canvas, that would show, show through as well. And it help, let's see if I put on a lighter color on top. See, and then again. So those colors shine through from, the, from below it without it becoming a mess. If I was to use, if I was to whack up the loading and try and do the same, going back the way, all of a sudden, Art Rage is blending those, which is great, but not for this layer. You will end up with a muddy mess if you did that. So if I go back, so like I said, you choose your darker colors, get your greens, get your ochres, get your browns in there, and we're going to build up from there and make it hopefully shine a little bit more than he does now. Okay, so we've done the blocking in, and now we've moved on to this stage. So here you see, if we zoom in a little bit, Aguero's face is pretty much done here. And so what I've done to create that, you can see it's kind of come to life a little bit. Oop. It's come to life a little bit. And that is through, basically, like I said before, we've built up the color blocking, and then we've added on the thicker paint. So as you can see, there's a bit more texture going on there. There's a little bit more kind of the paint blending together. And that's done by, again, like I said, you select your paintbrush on the left, you go to your settings, and you put the loading up a little bit. Now, I wouldn't put it up too high. I just want enough to kind of get the paint blending together. So if I color drop some of his tones on his head, and you can see, so on this side, and then if I go to a color next to it, a bit lighter, you can see how it starts to blend in. And then if you mix it with a color, it's one of those grays next to it. You can see Art Rage is such a fantastic tool that the paint blends on the canvas as you're doing it. And so when you start doing that, that's when you're kind of putting the, fle the, the flesh on the bones, the, the luminescence of the skin comes through. You start using deeper reds. And they really shine if you put them next to, if I get rid of the layers there, if you put that next to a nice dark blue and then you start blending in, that's how you get the kind of eye tones and the smoothing of the of the brush strokes a little bit more in the detailed areas. I still want it to, to look like it's been painted choppily and not too uber smooth. <clears throat> My art's never been about being very, very smooth. I kind of like to see the brush strokes. I like it to be a little bit more emotive. So I'm kind of at this stage happy with him. I'm going to put a little bit of texture behind him a little bit later on. But that's when we start started roughly blocking in a bit of colour and then repeating the same process on the clothing. So as you can see, we've blocked in. Uh, the painting's moved on. Uh, again, using the dry brushes underneath. And now I'm starting to add on a little bit more loaded paint. And you can see the brush strokes... I want to keep it a little bit of motion in there as if he's kind of walking, you know, swashbuckling his way towards the viewer. Um, and I've got my city kits referenced here so I could uh, I can pick colours from there. Uh, and I'm trying to recreate their shirt, but in Elizabethan style. Uh, that's the thought process behind it. Um, and so again, when you start adding the paint on, that's when it starts to shine and glisten. And then you take a step back from it and you start to see how it kind of comes together. You can see in the layers, if I open up, I've not got too many layers on this one. I've got my Aguero, if I hide these. I've got my drawing. I've got my face. And now I'm building this up. Um, I've started using more and more layers, I suppose, in my work uh, of late. The more technical stuff I do, the more detailed. If it's just a kind of splashy painting, I'll just do it all on one layer. Uh, and let it all kind of blend together. But I found on this more intricate stuff, I, I never used to kind of want to put too many layers in um, because you can't really do layers, as so as to speak, you know, on a canvas. But on these, it does really help kind of refine 
what area you're working on so you're not having to rub out bits and worry about paint blending. You can just do the face and the neck and build on top of that. And we're nearly there now. He's got his right hand still to do. But I was happy. I redid a bit of the bit of the uh, drapery and his clothing. I wanted his shirt to still be kind of rough and choppy. Uh, but I've started adding a little bit of texture just, and a little bit of sheen as if it's kind of a velvety kind of material. <clears throat> Um, as you can see, I'm using some references here of uh, Pontormo, Jacobo Pontormo, and a bit of Mannerist art on the left, uh, because there's no better at <laughs> V-folds and drapery than Pontormo in my book, and I really like his kind of pastel blues and colours he used. So I kind of use that as a little bit of a reference, drawing on my art history kind of background. So he's nearly done. We've, we're getting somewhere. Uh, as you can see, I've added a little bit of texture behind his face. You can see up here on the top of his forehead and round his chin and that is very simply done if I go down um, and within the background I've painted in the orange gaps now I've kind of color selected the orange as you can see and painted so if I go into that one painted behind and if I was to let me show you whack up the loading on this and say I wanted some texture on his cheekbone as you can see I can just start feathering that in behind and that just gives you there you go. How much you want to do. So if you want a wrinkly face, you can add it in later on. So on those dry bits of paint, which didn't have much texture on them, you can add it in. Uh, and it doesn't affect the paint that's down on there. So it's quite a nice little trick uh, to kind of not make a mess of your canvas, but to add a bit of texture later on. So all we've got to do now is finish that hand. And then we can uh, bring it into Photoshop and uh, have a little monkey around with it. But we'll do that hand first. So as you can see, Aguero is now finished. Um, I'm quite happy with him. We added the swoosh there, the little like swoosh, there's buttons on a different layer. We finished the texturing and I'm quite happy with him. Um, he looks okay, nice texture, nice choppy, not too much detail. Just not where it's not needed, but the face I'm quite happy with. And he's got a nice orange background behind there painted in so I can bring him onto a white background and it will still look great. Happy with the highlights and the hair. Uh, and yeah, he's kind of come together quite nicely. So what I would do then now is, is go to File, Export File. And this is the nice thing you can set Photoshop and bring it in as a PSD file, which is a great thing for kind of, especially for the more kind of professional stuff. Uh, or if you're wanting to add a painterly effect and then bring it into Photoshop. Um, I've come from using different programs before where you couldn't do that, and so this is the end. So I'd really recommend having a go on ArtRage and having a little play and a tinker, and I hope some of the things I've kind of shown you, I know it's not been the most kind of live action one, I think I'll do a video very soon where I'm actually talking over as I actually paint it, uh, but it's giving the stages and the progression and, and hopefully it will help. And the main thing to do with ArtRage is just have a play. You've got all the tools, you've got your watercolour, uh, felt pens, oil pastels, you've got um, pal uh, palette knife, you know, all sorts of spray paint, texture, whatever you want, whatever your style, whatever your medium, you can create it. Uh, my kids love playing with it and monkeying about and coming up with new things and it is really a fun thing but it also can be a very powerful tool. So hopefully this video has been beneficial and showing a little bit of my style, a little bit of my process, but also the workings of Outrage 5 and maybe make it a little bit less intimidating to first have a go on it if you've not used it before, or just to kind of show my workflow if you know the program. Um, it's definitely worth giving a go. Uh, if you want to see more of my work created on it, um, head to www.philgallowaydraws.co.uk. Uh, I'm on Twitter, at, and my handle is at filthyart, which is P-H-I-L-T-H-Y-A-R-T. And I'm on Instagram as Phil Galloway Draws, so you can follow a few of my doodles on there. Thank you very much for, you know, watching this. Hopefully it's been good for you. And I'll be making some more videos very soon. Take care. Bye now.